Uh, next up, we have Dr. Paul Vixie, and I will remind you before he speaks, um, you know, as you're coming in on the left side, um, when the talk's done, make sure you exit out, um, exit out your left side, our stage right, go out those back doors, or the side doors here, and we'll kind of keep the flow going through when you're done. So I'd like to present Dr. Paul Vixie. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Um, we have been doing some uh, science fair project work at my day job, and we had some intermediate results that I thought would be interesting to this crowd, and the program committee agreed. So let us begin. Um, front runners are people who are grabbing things uh, that may be valuable to others uh, for the purpose of either hoarding them to drive up the price of other things or uh, just keeping them so that you have to pay them essentially ransom to get it. I was a member of the ICANN Security and Stability Committee when we published this report because there was an awful lot of front running in the form of domain grabbing. People were grabbing domain names for reasons other than uh, using them and uh, we thought that that was a security and stability problem and uh, wrote a report. Uh, one of the ways that this manifested was in tasting, domain tasting. It used to be possible within certain limits for some registrant to grab a domain name, keep it for three days, and then return it without owing any money. Uh, and as I say, that's within limits. They had some things, they, you know, they couldn't do too many per day, and they had to pay for some other number of them and so forth. But it was basically, it was a loophole by which a small number of people were uh, keeping a whole large number of domain names uh, because you could grab the same one 73 hours later and uh, anyway, that was all shut down. ICANN finally did something. They realized uh, that this was bad for the world, and as a 501c3 public charity, they thought that they should help the world in that way. So they, they, they got rid of domain tasting. Um, that does not mean that front running has gone away. So we are a passive DNS company uh, at the moment. We have a lot of other data sources, but we're known for passive DNS. And we have a lot of real-time data. And we thought we would take a look at whether the real-time information flowing through the DNS could be of help to somebody who wanted to uh, acquire a domain name for the purpose of then selling it later or maybe collecting traffic because of typo squatting or whatever. Um, now, most of what we do focuses on things that exist, but we do have a channel that uh, just talks about uh, observations of non-existence, which is called NX domain in the, uh, in the DNS field. Um, and so although we don't have a database for that, we do have a very good real-time flow. So uh, this turned out to be kind of a good way to use our position of observability in the industry to uh, you know, figure out whether this was a problem that we could then bring to the attention of ICANN and others. Um, now, we are not concerned about people who are amateurs at this. If you think of a cool name, uh, a cool domain name, when you're taking a shower or dri driving on your commute and you go register that, you're not going to cause a problem for anybody. Um, that, I mean, there was a chance to do that 30 years ago. Whoever registered scuba.com, probably later sold it for millions, and I can tell you that the guy who registered altavista.com did in fact sell it for millions to uh, DEC when they had a search engine by that name. Um, but we're not worried about that, um, because it's by definition not scaling. Um, but the professionals who are working at scale uh, are really getting in the way. They're, it's inevitable now, if you're gonna start a company, that uh, one of the things you'll test for is can I get the .com name? And if you can't get the .com name, chances are you will not choose that name for your company or your product, uh, which means uh, these, these names are very powerful. They are as powerful as an international trademark would be if such a thing existed. Um, and uh, you know, wherever there is uh, money to be made, you'll find people looking for the loopholes that will allow some of that money to flow their way. Um, and I think we have to pay attention to that. I think that the DNS uh, really should be available for people who want to add value to the internet rather than adding money to their bank account as their first act. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do well by doing good, but doing well at the expense of others is a problem. Sorry if I'm going a little fast for you. I have uh, 50 slides. This is a one-hour talk. I have tw 20 minutes to do it in. Um, so um, we don't sell the NX domain feed to spammers or domainers. 
uh, and that does not just reflect my own ethical concerns about it. It's a very practical concern. Uh, we have 200,000 cash miss transactions coming to us every second, and these are from customers who operate a sensor for us in exchange for a discount on commercial services. Um, and they could, if they saw us doing evil with their feed, uh, stop sending us that data. It's that they're under contract, but that contract can be terminated. They could choose uh, either to stop using our commercial services or to stop getting a discount on them, which means I have to be extremely careful with what we allow their data as it flows through our system to then be allowed to do. And a couple of them are ethically very concerned about things like front running, things like domaining. And that's why we have a fairly long contracting process when people want to buy data from us uh, they will end up sitting with a fairly senior person at Farsight and describing their intended use and signing a contract indicating that that and only that will be the use they make of our data. And if we later find that they made other uses, then they're going to discover that the contract has teeth. Uh, so as you listen to this, please understand that we don't do surveillance and we don't help spammers, uh, even though we have a very good observation framework within those constraints. So, again, this is a science fair project, so I'll tell you uh, what our hypothesis was. Uh, we thought that there would be somebody out there who could see NX domain traffic, although probably not from us, because as I said, we wouldn't sell to them. Uh, but we're not the only game in town, and a lot of other ISPs and so forth are data mining everything they can because they are engaged in a race to the bottom on the margins on their primary product, and so they all sort of uh, give a, a, an eye toward social networking or uh, basically selling your PII as a, an additional data, uh, revenue source for them. And um, so we thought, are there people looking for typo squatting? Are, are they registering domains that are one letter or in some case one bit off of some existing name for the purpose of catching nearby traffic? Um, or are they looking for permutations? Uh, in Vietnam, they called this recon by fire. Shoot a machine gun into the forest there and see if anybody yells. Um, and uh, we, we looked at various things like hamming distance and whatnot to find what nearby meant in the, in the context of nearby domain names. We have, of course, I mentioned we have a passive DNS database, and it's what we're most known for, but it's built on a real-time foundation called the Security Information Exchange. And um, we're seeing maybe 700 megabits a second of real-time data, which about half is DNS. The other half is random other stuff like spam. Um, and that is the foundation of our passive DNS database. So although the database pays the bills, the real-time exchange is uh, the source of the data that we used for this science fair experiment. Um, and I want to mention that if you are out there doing good uh, by our definition and you're not charging a fee for it, you probably qualify for a free grant of our services. Whether the good you're doing is generating chapters for your master's thesis or whether you're an internet superhero, uh, it doesn't matter to us. Uh, so, so please do talk to us about that. This is, we're not just a commercial company. Um, so we looked at uh, NX domain data, we looked at newly observed data, we have a channel for each one. Uh, I've just gotten my five minute warning, believe it or not, so uh, I can't go through these in as much detail as I'd like, but they will be available online, and of course you all apparently have my email address, please use it. This is what it looks like on the NX domain channel, broken out into ASCII, so you can see the uh, delegation point there at the end. Um, and that delegation point, nflixvideo.net, is what you would have to register. So that's what concerns us. And the expression of negativity is below that, IP41, lag zero, et cetera, uh, is what didn't exist. nflixvideo.net very much did exist. Um, and you can see that in who is. It belongs to Netflix. Uh, the other channel we have is newly observed. They look like this. And you're just seeing the domain, startjobs.xyz in this case. So. Um, these are in vastly different volume scales. Uh, it's in 5,000 increments on the top and uh, 2 million on the bottom. So you're seeing a lot more NX domain traffic than you are seeing the uh, uh, newly observed domains. Uh, the stuff that you see as the parent of the things that don't exist is what you'd expect. A lot of people look for non-existent ip6.int or non-existent spamhouse.org subdomains. 
Um, we filtered, we did all kinds of stuff. Um, it's a lot of junk, huge amount of junk, bad characters that make it into DNS that shouldn't. Or they're just buggy libraries and bug, buggy applications. Um, and what did we find? This is what I really wanted to get to, so I'm going to use my last minute for that. Um, so there wasn't a huge amount of evidence that uh, NX domain correlates to newly do observed domains. And we think that we can uh, hone this down by doing different science uh, using slightly different data and uh, filtering it out at, in, in different ways. So we did learn some things that I'm skipping the slides that tell you what we learned. But ultimately, there were only 181 crossovers where something was negative before it was positive. Uh, and out of the size of the data set we had lasting a week, that could easily be uh, completely reasonable people that are just registering stuff that they, uh, they do plan to use. Uh, so in other words, at the moment, we have no evidence that the bad guys are using NX domain to drive their operations. As to whether they should, uh, I'll leave that for them to decide. Uh, if they do, we'll be watching. Um, there was a huge amount of other crud, and I wanted to let you know that uh, turns out NX domain is a great source of DGA intelligence, domain generation algorithm. Uh, botnets that are using the DNS in order to find their command and control use these gibberish domain names uh, that are computed based on the current time of day in order to decide where their command and control is going to be. So you as the owner of the botnet need only register one of the ones that your botnet is going to be using tomorrow, and then tomorrow you'll be able to send it commands. But all of them have to do lookups for all of the names that might be used for tomorrow. And so NX Domain as a data source, this is something Dembala and David Dagan's team at Georgia Tech told us 10 years ago, and I thought that perhaps that would mean we would have dealt with it by now, but no. According to our, uh, our data, this is very much real. And so my conclusion is, um, well, my conclusion way down at the, oh wait, excuse me, one more thing, I'm gonna go over time, they're gonna kill me now. PayPal has a problem. Um, these are all things that had PAYP somewhere in their names. And um, you know, PayPal is one of my partners and so I've already informed them of this. But every domain holder, every trademark holder has a problem like this one. Um, and you're gonna find these often in the NX domain first because they will be doing re reconnaissance to see if this exists before they try and register it. Um, and again, this is just one trademark. So, um, yeah, here we go. Way too many uh, slides there. Anyway, um, my hope is that NX domain traffic uh, is going to be the next big data mining opportunity. And my hope is that uh, we will somehow keep that data mining from happening on the dark side of the economy. And uh, if you are interested in doing science for which you do not charge a fee, you can get an NX domain feed in real time from us. But whatever you do, I hope that you will at least give some consideration to things that don't exist and the implications of that non-existence on your security and the security of the internet. Thank you. Do I have a minute for questions? Okay. Just scream it out. Wait, here we go. Um, to me, it was the fact that non-existent names that have a short hamming distance away from PayPal are being uh, reconned. I assumed that people would just try to register these things and use a, you know, I'm sorry that name already exists as their signal that they couldn't get it, but they're not. They're doing reconnaissance first. Um, we did not look at, uh, you, you would have to decode the IDN uh, strings into uh, UTF or you know, something, and uh, our level of processing was command line aux scripts for this. So no, we did not look at any of the international names for this study. Uh, I'll be back probably next year with an update on this that uh, has a lot more detail. Um, 
no. The new, G new GTLDs were conspicuously absent from this study. And, you know, I want to say, as I usually do, that the way that most of us in this room first become aware of the existence of a new GTLD is when we get spammed by it. And so I was expecting to see a fair amount of the bad behavior happening there, but it's not. And I think it's either that the bad guys have got other lower-hanging fruit that's more profitable to forget about that stuff, or they realize that these new, new uh, GTLDs are very sparsely populated, unlike something like .de or .com. And so there won't be very many opportunities to sort of play battleship uh, in those spaces until and unless one of them ever succeeds. Louder? Uh, that is true. If someone does a registration event uh, and then they don't use the domain, we will not see it in the newly observed domain feed. So we're really looking for things that uh, were first observed negative, negatively and then observed positively. So you could bypass a study like ours with, uh, by simply avoiding DNS queries and doing everything at the registry level. Um, and we'll probably do a study there. We have three bulk who is providers that we can uh, use for that, that study, the partners. Um, and we'll probably have an update on that in the next version of this talk. Uh, the question is how much who is information is private? And my answer is um, I estimate that very little of it is private, probably on the order of 10 to 15%. Uh, because bad guys would rather use the address that corresponds to the stolen credit card they used to buy the domain because that will help them get in the door in case the who is information is used to validate their, their credit card number. Um, so really the who is privacy tends mostly to be used by uh, people who just don't want to be spammed rather than by people who want to do crime. Uh, that doesn't mean I love who is privacy. I'd like to see it go away, but I, it, I don't think it's the problem that people are worried about. Is that it? How do you get the slides? Uh, um, my email address is vixi at fsi.io, so you could send me mail, or you could wait for it to appear on the uh, DEF CON website, which it will inevitably do. All right, thank you.